did you ever lose something that that meant a great deal to you? I, I don't mean people. We lose people all the time. God takes them. My God, when I came to the throne, I had lost my um, father, my mother, my elder brother. My grandmother died within a couple of months of me coming to power. Um, I have lost babies. I mean um, a thing, an object, and not a ring or a bracelet or a locket. I mean, they can be easily replaced, but something that was so important to you that you thought you you might never <clears throat> recover. I'm talking about my flagship, the Mary Rose. Now, why was it important? It was important to me because when I first came, it was um, 1509. I wanted to build ships to defend my realm against my enemies. So I commissioned the building of two ships um, the Peter Pomegranate and the Mary Rose, built side by side in Portsmouth. Marvellous vessels, both of them. They were troop carriers. They weren't um, the, the grandiose ships they became. But the Mary Rose, of course, two years in the building, um, they put a lot of effort into it. And I loved it when it was, uh, when it was made. And gradually over the years, it was um, refitted and improved until she was the finest ship in the fleet, certainly the fastest ship in the fleet for her size. <clears throat> she was about um, 900 tons at the end, which um, is not the biggest by a long shot, but nevertheless, quick, powerful, feared by our enemies. And she was the boat that always carried me wherever I went. So of course I went across to France. The Mary Rose would be the boat if um, we had to send my sister up to Scotland. The Mary Rose was the boat that took her. It just made me smile whenever I walked up the gangplank and onto the ship. It, she belonged to me. She was part of me, even though she was made of wood and metal. She was part of me. So that terrible day, um, the Battle of the Solent with the French. Let, let me just put some background to it. The, the French fleet was coming to us with 200 vessels and we had about 100 ships and they were all in port at Portsmouth and the French fleet came round the, the 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 corner of the Isle of Wight and just sat there and our ships couldn't get out of the port because um uh, there was no wind everything was becalmed so there were the best part of 300 vessels in the water as far as the, the eye could see <clears throat> but nothing going on it was the slowest battle in history so George who had just been put in command of the Mary Rose, and he was my friend. He um, he was um, attaching ropes to the ship and pulling her from side to side with all her sails unfurled in an attempt to catch the wind, and it worked. It was a great scheme, <clears throat> and she came out. And the other captains, when they saw what Sir George has done, they followed suit, so some more English boats were able to come out. But at one stage... The Mary Rose was facing off the French fleet on her own. 200 Frenchies and one English boat. And they weren't afraid. I was watching this on South Sea Castle. I mean, how did I get there? I dined out the night before um, on the Henri Grasse Dieu. And I wanted to go into battle, but they wouldn't let me. They said, no, sire, imagine you're on a boat when it gets attacked and burns and sinks it would be a nightmare so they sent me ashore and I'm on the ramparts of South Sea Castle the castle which I built <clears throat> watching the action the Mary Rose gallantly sailing headlong towards the French fleet without a care or a thought for her own safety there were some smaller French vessels in the water and she turned to um to give them a broadside just to to bloody their nose <clears throat> and she did this and then we saw her try to make the maneuver to turn to bring the other side guns into play and um, the wind got up and she heeled over i think it was a mistake but i don't know on whose part because there were very few witnesses left at the end to testify but we saw the ship heel over and we saw the sea rush in through the open gun ports. 
<clears throat> she sank very quickly, in about 90 seconds. And I'm a mile away. I, I could hear the shouts of the sailors, the screams. There were some men that survived from a crew of about 600 or around 30. They were all um, up in the topmasts and they were simply lowered into the water. Nobody could swim in Tudor times. We had to send little rowboats out to rescue them as they clung to barrels and various other bits of um, floating debris from the boat. <clears throat> and the Mary Rose was gone. Her mast were just about visible. She wasn't in much, about six fathoms. Um, and I was absolutely awestruck. This boat was unsinkable. She was so fast, she was so powerful, and here she had gone over, and the French were celebrating. You could hear them singing in their boat. Yo, 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 yo. We could hear them singing in their barges. And of course, I'd lost my friends as well. Sir George Carew, as the captain of the May Rose, my vice admiral, he was wearing a brand new breastplate, and <clears throat> he sank like a stone in his armour, as did the other officers. It was a terrible day. His wife was standing next to me and she fainted into my arms. I caught her before she hit the ground. She would have bashed her head. I tried to be strong. I, I held up as long as I could. <clears throat> but my Mary Rose had gone. I don't know that I cried for very long, but I cried. <clears throat> I couldn't speak. There was a catch in my voice. But a king has to do what a king has to do. And the very next day, it was business as usual. I knew that there were going to be rescue attempts. We had some Venetian divers uh, on board, and they were able to... Um, organized dives on the vessel. First of all, they brought up some of the heavier guns and then they brought up all the rigging, but um, they didn't succeed in saving her. But within hours, people were petitioning me about other matters. I signed the articles for the Henry VIII School for Young Gentlemen in Coventry the day after, and my signature is bold and clear as ever it was, <clears throat> because you cannot dwell too long. Also, if you dwell on a, a, a loss like this, your enemies get to know of it. So you have to appear strong and appear that you don't care. But I cared. I cared as much for that boat, that mass of wood and sail, as I did for any of the women I married.